welcome to Armchair Ministries. A reading today from Isaiah chapter 55, this is what it says. O everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye and buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight himself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come near unto me, and your soul shall live, and I'll make an everlasting covenant with you, even uh, the sure mercies of David. And 55, 56, and this is what it says at the end, and that, verse 7, Even then will I break, no, sorry, well, and the sons of the strangers, that with uh, verse 6, and the sons of the strangers that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love his, the name of the Lord, to be his servants, every one that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, taketh hold, even them will I bring into my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. These burnt offerings and their sacrifice shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, hath said, said, saith, Yet will I gather them to him, and beside those that are gathered unto him. So the Lord's bringing a lot of joining together, isn't it, in your Christian life? But God uses uh, people, doesn't he? He always uses people. One man and God is a majority, I always say. And uh, what it is as well, uh, the fact that if God that God wants to do something, he will have somebody there prepared uh, and ready for what he wants them to do. I always believe in the steps of a good man are ordered by the law. But I believe he has to be prepared, uh, has to prepare in his Christian life and get on, and he has to persevere. And then at the third one, in that power to operate in the things of God. Because what it is, it says the steps. And I don't think it believe oh, it just comes all in one big bunch, you know. It's a step. And God is trying our hearts uh, to bless us and see which way we will walk. The steps of a good... And when things go wrong and everybody's, uh, you know, as David... I'm not to talk about David today. Everything's going wrong for you. As David went, he persevered until he felt, came to a place where God could use him in a mighty way. Use them in the small task before you can be used in the big task. And I look at David's life, I think to myself, you know, he's looking, he's a shepherd boy, obviously, he's took him from there, and he's took him to be king over Israel and Judah, uh, six and a half years over, uh, over, over Judah, and the rest over Israel. So for 40 years, he served God's people. So he's just a shepherd boy, it wasn't to anyone any would probably notice or something like that. But God had his eye on him. And if God's got his eye upon you, he will bring it to pass. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just imagine him looking on the stars and looking up into the... And having that desire, oh, who made those stars? Who made that moon? Who made that sun? And he's seeing all these things. and looking at the beauty of the earth and the beauty of God in the things which he could see with his eyes. But... Further than that, I believe he wanted to see something for himself, which would prove, you know, the Lord says, prove me now and I will show you. So what he, what he wanted to do was that he probably wanted something bigger. He wanted a reality of a living God. And we'll, see, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, so you, know, you can look upon the back on David's life and you can think to yourself, when did he first speak to David in the Bible? You know, he, well, he speak to him all the time. But when did he first speak to him? You go back, you know, when he was king, don't forget he was king for 40 years, till he was 70, and then he died. But if you look back, did he, was it before he fought Goliath? Was it further back? For, when is the first time in the Bible that the, the Lord spoke about David, mentioned him, not, not spoke to him personally? And it was when he, Samuel was told, go and tell Saul, uh, I have chosen uh, a man that is better than you. And sometimes what it is, you know, the Lord wants us to... Not, I think they jumped in with Saul because when later on David says to uh, Saul's daughter that the Lord chose me before he chose your, 
before you chose your father. So really, it was in the mind of God. Because why? Because the steps of a good man, he was a good man, but they're ordered by God himself. And nothing will move, move, um, whatever happens. And with David, it was massive. We, we'll ever uh, say, what will it do? We'll never uh, send him on on a different path than what, what the Lord wants to him. And we'll go to a few little pointers before that in a little bit. So you can look, in that time, he didn't even mention David's name, does he, when he went to say, go and tell us, so I chose a man uh, that is better than you. Now, I want to look in my Christian life. I want the best, what God wants for me, do you? You want the best for me. I always have done, even when I first became a Christian, I found... That's what I am giving my life to because something happened to me when I gave my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. But what does God see? Hallelujah. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. It's not what man can't see what's going on in here, can it? And, and you know, but God sees what's going on in here because he sees uh, the thoughts and intents of your heart. He knows your motives. That's what it means. So when everybody else, you can kid everybody else, you cannot kid God himself in your kind. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. You know, he said these are the things he said. These are things what came from in here. You know, not just in here, but in here, in the most important. He says, I have continued with the help of God until this day. So he's really, I think, reliant upon God. If you've been on a Christian life, a while you can realize you look back, you've got to look back and think to yourself, Yeah, it was the Lord who did that. Yeah, it was the Lord. Oh, there was nobody else there, but I've continued with the help of God until this day. And then he says, Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. So it's always something which is in, it's not something which is upon. Of course, the Holy Spirit comes in our lives, doesn't it? So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What steps do you think God had to David? Well, we're going to go through in a minute. Well, I think he had the steps of preparation because preparation in our Christian life is needed. When I got saved, I read the Bible four or five hours a day because the Lord has spoke to me, even though other people had spoke, uh, said to me, don't think you've got what you think you have. I don't think I, what it was. If God speaks to you, you don't think you know. Hallelujah. Uh, in your Christian life. So that's the preparation. Preparation was needed because we need help, don't we? We can't, we won't, don't we want to be the same? And well, you've got to have a desire, right? Gideon said, where be the miracles that our fathers told us about? Even though he was the least in his father's house, he had a desire to see the miracles which his father told him about. So preparation is needed. Perseverance is vital. You know, keeping going you know, I've seen many people get off this bus, the bus of Christianity, hallelujah, or steps which God wanted to, oh, it was too hard for me, that. You know, I'm not capable of doing You know, but you realise that God who rules the universe, because you've looked up like David, you see the stars and the sun and the moon, and, and the Bible says God spoke and the, these place things come in and he made the stars also, hallelujah. So that's a great thing, isn't it? But the third one, you see, you never get to this. Most Christians don't get to this. God's power is available. Hallelujah. It's free. I said last night, it's, got, it's free in our, uh, in our Christian life. One man, I said, is, and God is a majority. Well, Jesus came one man, didn't he? John came before him as one man. But today, but, but, but together, he is God and man. And he said, it become of us to create, to create all righteousness, you know. So what it was... It takes you and it takes God joining together in your in your life to produce what God asks for you and for other people through you. But you have to take that first step and that first step is preparation and that is needed, you know. So what it is, don't forget with him, with David, he didn't do he wasn't perfect in everything. He only sinned in one with situation where upset God was Bathsheba. The trouble was it wasn't because he did that. Is because he had no conviction of what he had done. And of course, the Lord had to take, send the, the prophet unto him, you know. So what it is in our Christian life, preparation is needed. So when did we first see? We heard that. And then Samuel is sent to David, isn't it? He? He's sent to said, the Lord says to him, go and uh, tell 
Saul, I've chosen a person who is better. You notice the word there, better than thou. But sometimes we don't think we're better. But when God looks on in here, he sees all potential in our Christian life, what we have. He knows us all together. He knows you're sitting down and you're standing up. You think God doesn't know you. God, you can. You might be a kid, everybody else, but you cannot kid the Lord in, in your life. So preparation, and, and Samuel is sent to to tell to anoint him. Is he tell the one the one I tell you? I want you to go and anoint him. And it turns it, it turns up. I want to quickly go through this, and he goes through them all. And Samuel says, uh, of, of, of uh, his, his eldest son. He says, surely the Lord's anointed you before. He's made the mistake before with Saul, because that was Saul was a big fella, wasn't he? Big tall fella. But he's looking again on the outward appearance. The Lord has to speak to him. This is a prophet, friends. It's not just like an ordinary person. He's the main man, as, you, as we say. And uh, But he says, he says, surely the Lord's anointing is before me. Of course, the Lord says to him, man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. See, God sees in it. And this is why David said, creating me a clean heart. It reminds me, there's a lot of trouble going on down here, but renew a right spirit within me. And I believe if you've not got a clean heart, you never have a right spirit, a righteous spirit, doing the right thing, what the law wants unto you. So he did it all, and, and he, got the, even he got it wrong. And he says, is these all your children? Yeah, no, they've got one who looks after the sheep. They haven't even invited him. And sometimes in your Christian life, you might not get invited to certain things. In, uh, you know what I'm talking about. You don't get invited. You're left on the shelf to point forever. And there he comes along. And, uh, and, and the Lord says, this is him, anoint him. And he anoints him in the middle of his brethren. And so he's 17 probably years of age. And all the oil comes down. And the oil people say he put more oil on David. <laughs> that he did on Saul, and that's what made the difference. That's not what makes the difference whatsoever. He just got more oil on his best suit. And as you imagine David saying, wondering what's going on, because not much dialogue going on there. And of course, the problem is here David, he goes back to look after the sheep. So what it is here, there's not much happened. He's been anointed of, 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 of God. For what he wants him to do. And if you're anointed of God. The Lord has something for you to do. What is the difference between Saul is. He went his own way. His steps were of himself. David's steps were of the Lord. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. It's the way God wants you to go. Hallelujah. And sometimes. You don't want to go that way. But you say Lord you know the way. You've done it before. You know better than me. So he goes back looking after the sheep. But as he goes back to look after the sheep, a lion and a bear come out to take a, uh, a, a, a lamb out of, the, out of the flock. And so he goes after them and he kills a lion and a bear. You see, friend, he's been anointed of God. He's got the power and authority of God. One time, you know, the Bible, he had, he had that concern for just a small sheep which have been taken out of the flock. I think they did it all the time, lines and birds, but he said to me, God, the Lord's going to show us a, 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 a priority here. We've got to look after the little sheep. Have you looked after the little sheep in the Sunday school? Bringing them to the meetings, doing this, that, and the other. The Lord's seen it, you see, friends. Nobody else has seen it, but the Lord has seen it, and that's all that really matters. But his life was being prepared, you see, uh, for the things of God. And of course, that, that's what happened. Now, a little while later, what happens, Saul is uh, going a bit strange and he's, he's, he's not doing the things which are right. Because when you do, when you don't do, feel the anointing, as it says, it says the, the Spirit of God departed from Saul and an evil spirit from God came upon him. It doesn't seem right, that, does it? But because the thing is, he was doing the things which were not wrong. Mr. 10%, that was Saul. Everybody owed Saul something, and he would give them 10%. And don't forget, the Lord had actually told them before what he would do. He'd bring them all under his authority. And that's why David said he would make his family free in Israel. So here he is, here, in this situation. He has to go to Saul, and this, and this age, so we found a man... I think they set him up, actually. I think they really knew what they were going to do. And said, we found a man who's mighty in valor and this and that. 
And he said, and Saul said, bring him to me. And when he came, he said, Saul loved him. Hallelujah. It's great when somebody loves you, isn't it? It's lovely when Saul, the souls of this world, and when he played, he, the, the, the evil spirit from God came upon him. David played on the harp and this, it says he was peace. He was brought to rest and be brought. To so he was doing great things for. It's probably only 17, 18, something like that. And what it is, the point is what I'm trying to say. He had something which he can give to other people. And when you've got that peace, you can give to other people. It doesn't matter which way it is, you can pass it on and say, the Lord can do this for you, and the Lord can bless you and help you. And don't forget, he was living the luxury, wasn't he? He was, you know, he's probably his own room, best of food, you know, he wasn't outside with the rain and the, the, the storm and all, all the, the animals and it's, it's lambing time. Hard, really hard work, you know. But he's got it. He was just on call every so often. And sometimes in our Christian life, that step is the Lord's watching you. He's watching you for what you will, how you will approach this situation you find yourself in. And that's what he did. He did it for the mere man. So you would think that he had arrived, wouldn't you? He's in the palace. He's with the king. Hallelujah. But it doesn't always work like that because the Lord wants to see what's going on in here. You see, how you will react to what happened. And Saul goes to battle and what happens? He sends David back to look after the sheep. Don't forget, he's been, I think sometimes he's been a bit messed around. You know, all this oil was over. Oh, what's all? You're a young guy, you know. He doesn't understand these things. And he's not blaming Sam, Samuel, who made a mistake. <laughs> Didn't actually explain what had happened. Oh, we don't want to 17 year old. We don't explain what's going on, you know, and said, This is what, what the Lord does for you and to help you. And so he gets sent back. And now in a situation, is surplus to requirements. So what I'm trying to say is being prepared on his attitude. Hallelujah. Isn't it funny though? Young people have sometimes have a bad attitude, don't they? don't have a really good attitude. And the Lord wants to pray to a good attitude in your life. And that attitude is, uh, Lord, you've done something in my life. You can do something with my life. Hallelujah. But you've got to change me. You've got to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Not... You're not telling me what they, you know what I'm saying, hallelujah. So that's what he does. He goes back to, as it sent back to the sheep. Saul goes into battle and takes three of his brothers with him. And that's where there's, he does no time. I can't see what the time limit on any of these situations. He doesn't tell you the time of how old he was then. So he's in the 18 years of age. You know, he's in the, as you say, a young person. You know, young people are like today, hallelujah. The brilliant, hallelujah. How do I know? Because I was a young person. I've been through this situation. So I know when you're surplus to requirements, nobody wants you. You think God's, some, maybe you think God's left you. I never thought for one second in my life that God has ever left me. Hallelujah. Because he's always with I will be with you. So we sent back uh, in preparation. You see all these things when they're coming and back in. Is it changing him? Is it going to say, well, what's your attitude like? What are you doing this for? Why are you doing that? But the thing is, the Lord has a plan for your life. I said last week, and God will not be, will not fail you because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. He has a plan for your life. And he's looking after his sheep. It's all going into battle and, and whatever. So what it is now is his dad sends him to do a small task. Take these cheeses. Take this to you. Uh, it, 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 to, to your brothers who are fighting with Saul take these but you see perseverance you have to perseverance through you know, these situ in the preparation things which are going wrong and you don't seem everything's going right nothing's going right you're surplus to requirement you, nobody's explaining anything even Samuel's got it all wrong but you've got to persevere persevere is, it, perseverance is needed you've got to keep going because we have seen many, many, many people get off on that. They've not really got to where the Lord wants them to be. So he's there. He says, take this. So what did he do then? He is, here he is. What is he doing when he says to his father, I'm not doing that. You know, I just see everybody's sermon. I'm always doing this for everybody else. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, sometimes you've got to have the right attitude. And that right attitude for David was obedience. 
And in the Bible, obedience is, is the most important thing in your Christian life because he did it. Hallelujah. So in, in perseverance, you've got to get past all this stuff. But in perseverance, you've got to be obedient. You've got to keep going. You've got to do what your father says. And I'm talking about as well as your heavenly father. Hallelujah. And what he did, he did that, didn't he? So he was obedient. And what was the second thing he did? He left the sheep with the keeper of the sheep. So, so what he had a responsibility to these sheep. You see, what the, these brothers said, we must have left those few sheep in the wilderness. Well, he left them with the keeper of the sheep. So what he was doing, he was being responsible, wasn't he? And it says he got a great, up a great while before day. So he was disciplined. Hallelujah. So what it is here, if he'd have gone up later, Goliath would have come at breakfast time and then at tea time. He'd have come, he'd have arrived after a, a, a Goliath had moved off, but he arrived on time. And sometimes you've got to be on time. Hallelujah. In anything you do, whether it's coming to the meetings or this, God is looking for oh, you, see, looking. You see, it's an attitude, you see, a proper attitude, an obedient responsibility. God doesn't just take anybody. He takes a good man. And a steps of a good man are ordered by God himself. Hallelujah. Leave the other rest. He leaves the rest to other people. But when it's the God is in it, your life, it's absolutely marvellous. So therefore he's ready. He turns up at the right time. Here he is. Is 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 persevering? He's come to the place because he's taking not the first step. He's, he's taking the second step. He's, he's persevering in his Christian life because it, 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 when you persevere, it's needed. Hallelujah in your Christian life. Hallelujah, you've got to persevere. When the pastor wants, you've got to be there. Hallelujah. Even though sometimes you feel like you're giving the run around or something, and nobody else is going to do it. Where's the other four brothers? Three are fighting in the army and four are sat at home playing on a big video games or something. Why didn't you ask one of them? David was looking after the sheep. But just because that, that things are happening like that, it doesn't matter. David went because he obeyed his father. Of course, he turns up, doesn't he? He's persevered. He's got it. You don't think that's a big thing? You know not how the Lord has got him to here when he's gone through this situation? Because these are the steps which God has ordered for you. And I don't care how bad they are. At the end of the day, God will bring you through. Hallelujah. He's brought me through many, 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 many difficult situations. So he arrives on time. Hallelujah. Goliath's just coming at that time when he arrives. Because he's persevered in all the situations he's found himself in. And he arrives and he's saying, bring me a, a person to fight me. And if he, he wins, we'll be your servants. If I win, you'll be, uh, you be our servants. So really, I think he got his own measured up. Nobody had to They all ran to the trenches. But what David comes along, he says, is there not a cause? He said to the people, is there not a cause? He said, what shall be given to this man? He says, he will give him his daughter. To, to, to my friend, Michelle, Michelle, I think, Michelle, or something like that. It, so what it was, it was a relationship, wasn't it? He gave him a reward. He said he'll make his, self, uh, make his family uh, rich in Israel and a release, because everybody all saw he'll re release his family from all the, Mr. Temp all the situations he'd brought them into. So really, he's got a perfect package, hallelujah. But he didn't want that whatsoever. Do you know why? Because he wanted a cause. Is there not a cause? Here's Goliath, mind the mouth and off, and he's David says, Is there not a cause? And next minute, his brothers come along. So imagine people, they say, With whom thou shalt left those sheep, you sheep in the wilderness. And these people he's talking to, trying to encourage them, they're demeaning what David's saying. And sometimes people do that, they demean what you say. And the worst thing you can do is to demean what somebody's saying when he's trying to encourage people. Sometimes in a, a a position one day and somebody said that's a lot of rubbish you're talking oh I didn't know what to say I said I never said anything but I'm trying to say if you've got something to say say it even though sometimes you may make a mistake the Lord will guide you and help you and show, show things the wish this is the way walk ye in it hallelujah so here he is encouraging his brothers to say and they're saying that's not all he does looks after a few sheep you see what I'm saying, friends? It's demeaning what he had the right attitude. There was a cause, 
Nobody wants to take up that cause. And David says, I'll do it. I'll fight him. I killed a lion. I killed a bird. And the God that delivered me from the lion and the bird will deliver you into my hands this day. So he goes back to Saul. You think, all oh, right, this would be great. This isn't it. We've got, uh, no, no, Samuel got it wrong. He didn't want it. He wanted to think. And you know, he's got his situations here. He was surplus to require him. He's persevered. He's came, and he's, cut, he's turned up at the right time. And sometimes in life, you re, 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 reach it with you turn up on the right time for God. Because what we've read, God is doing something afresh. In the world, he can't leave it as it is. We'll be going out with our tail between our legs. <laughs> and so he goes to Saul, and a person, what you would want God is trying to get us is from preparation, which he's done something in our lives, to perseverance when every problem has come up against us. And we've, we know we've, oh, goodness me, this is that, that. You still keep going with God because he has a plan for your life. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? And then you come, you've got to find a place where God wants you to be, and that is that place of power. Hallelujah. And he goes to Saul, and Saul says, I'm not able to fight this man. Oh, I can't get encouragement from anybody, can you? Have you ever been that way? Don't think you've got what you think you have. I've been in every area of the Christian life. Every single, and I'm not sort of boast, it's a fact. That God has brought me through. God has taught me. God has prepared me. I persevered. When everybody else has got off the bus, I've stopped on the bus. I'm going to the end, Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord has helped me and blessed me and done me again. So we've got to get a place of power. Saul says, you cannot fight this man. He wants to borrow his. He wants to borrow Saul's armour. Testimony. What if it's, you know, you, oh dear me. We don't want anybody else's, do we? I killed a lion and a bear on this fella. Will be uh, it be as that light and, and the burr. So he's come to the place of power. Oh, has he arrived? What is he saying? What is it? Power. He says there was, there was defied the armies of the living God. Hallelujah. He defied the armies of cliffing God. You know, all God's alive. You come to me with a sword. This is power, friends. This is something you know. Knowledge is a good thing because you have the knowledge, is the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. You know how big God is. You've been looking up into the stars and seeing them on the moon. And they, oh, dear me. I am, I, he's, my, he's my father and I'm a son to him. And he, what he says, says here, that was defy the armies of the living God. You come to with me, the son and the uh, um, <laughs> a sword and a shield. I come into you in the name of the God of the armies of Israel. So what it is, is God is really understanding how big God is. And that is power. And what he's saying here, he says about, about that all the world may see there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. All the world, you know, living up the road in a little one hour stadium. But you see, the thing is, he's looking past his circumstances and the situation. And he's looking not at here, he's looking there. And that makes a difference to your Christian life. Because we belong to the God who rules the universe. Hallelujah. You know, that he, that all the world may see there's a God in Israel. Is there not a cause? Haven't we got something which is worth fighting for? Or which, which, which is worth uh, oh, dying for? Hallelujah. Because when I gave my life to, Christ, to the Lord, I died, didn't I? I died for myself. I didn't want my own ideas, my own thoughts, my own way. I've had everybody, you know what they did to Jesus before he went on the cross? Hallelujah. You know, it could have, you know, Father, it, 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 this may pass from me, but not my will, but thy will be done. And sometimes all these preparations, these perseverance and this power, it comes with a cost. Hallelujah. And David didn't do everything right, did he? You know, David didn't do anything right. He killed Goliath. Killed Goliath. But I think then his troubles had just started. Hallelujah. It gets to Saul. So uh, David's killed uh, Saul's killed his thousands, and David has killed his ten thousand. He gets a javelin thrown at him, and he said he loved him. Well, go and let somebody else. Show sure you love him. Show sure you love that brother, that sister. Show sure you love them. Don't just talk that you love them. Hallelujah. So what it was, that's what Saul did. And sometimes we've got to grow up. It doesn't matter that whatever happens, whatever situation we find ourselves in, whatever person is 
It's putting that forward about you. It doesn't matter. It's because it's what God say in our Christian life. One man of God, I said, was the majority. Jesus had it, didn't he? Came and John came on on the on the on their own. Just imagine on their own. What about David? This is the same guy. After many years, he was king over Israel for forty years. Forty years he was. He died at seventy. You know, he died of he died of dementia. Because he said he was cold. So they got a young lady to sit on the side of him to try and warm him up. But what I'm trying to say is, the thing which people are talking about today, David had it. Hallelujah. That's what, what it says. It just gives him a little information. What you have in your life can go a long way. You can realise when it says he got no eat. <laughs> he got no eat. So that, they thought that was the remedy, didn't they? And uh, so and that's it. So... You know, this is what God wants to do in our lives. And the end of David wasn't very good, was it? You know, 70 years of age. He's not very old. He was always, and he only with Bathsheba. You know, when he had that affair with Bathsheba, the fact that the Bible reports, it says it was the only thing that David did wrong. So this is our line. You know, God sees the heart of the man. God sees not your head. It's not your head. You know, I love you, Lord, with all my head. <laughs> I love you, Lord, with all my heart. I really do. Hallelujah. So this is what we have to do. And then 6.21, it says, to, I said earlier on, it shows me before your father. So what it was, I'm trying to say, Saul, they picked the wrong man. Oh, they was in two of her heads. Like with Manasseh in, uh, in, in Acts 1. They shows the wrong man. But you know, you can be the best person for God. Because the God says, I've got a plan for your life. You've got to follow it step by step. It's not you getting from A to Z in one go. You go from A, B, you go through, not saying the whole alphabet. You take a step at a time and you find that God is doing something in your life more. All the people I started off with. A lot of them are not around today. Why? Because they weren't prepared. I spent four or five hours every day reading God's words, seeing or praying this. I was in Sunday school. I was in the youth work. I was in this. I was that. Lots of other things. Helping the minister, doing this, that and the other. But at the end of the day, it's what God wants you to do. Because he has this work. There's a work for Jesus. Only we, you can do. So God bless you. Help you. Make his face to shine upon you and give you a bit. Get a bit excited, you know. Man. So you don't lose your excitement. Like David says, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? This fella, is there not a cause? God bless you. Amen. Amen.